Howdy, my name is Sam Carlton. I am a uh, web consultant from Tulsa. I build uh, most recently Jamstack sites and uh, websites like that. Um, I want to do something fun. If you guys, um, if you guys, if something reson I say resonates or you're like you really like it, uh, feel free to drop some lightning bolts in the Twitch chat just as a way to interact um, and let me know that things are going good. Um, what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is the uh, how developers are notorious for not knowing um, their value. Let me switch on my presentation right here real quick. Um, and really undervaluing themselves. Um, if you guys, if you guys have done this uh, this for long, you know that occasionally there will be side projects that come this way. If you're entirely independent and you're really dependent on the pricing that you charge for projects, so what I'm going to talk to you about is how to get paid with spare. Um, so just diving into it, first part of this is the vetting the clients and this is a, this is a kind of a tricky uh process to navigate it's like well the aren't the clients picking me and that that is it's one of those simple but very important things that you have to you have to flip that mindset again it's like you're undervaluing your like there's literally you know like rebecca just talked about there's entire companies dedicated to just finding good developers like there's so much value that you you have um and so you have to you have to come out of a process of like no i'm i'm seeing if the client's good enough to take my work. Um, be professional enough to, to ask them why they want to do this and listen. So this is, this is a, again, this is, this is coming back to having the value for yourself, but also being a professional about how you're communicating with clients and saying, Hey, Hey, look, why, why do you even want to work with me? Have you guys tried something like Upwork or Fiverr? And the and the funny part about that is that that might be terrifying. It's like, well, what if they say no and they're like, what's Upwork? And they they end up using Upwork instead of you. That's actually a very good thing. And as a professional, you you have to be be willing to have the moral consistency to see if somebody thinks Fiverr Fiverr or Upwork would be better. I mean, we all I mean we all know it's well, those things can get you get mixed results um but you have to you know if somebody wants a cheaper option you have to offer them the cheaper option because you should be the more expensive option um and ask and just asking them and being upfront with this thing and, and then basically what this is is this is called a why conversation it's a it's a term coined by a guy named jonathan stark and he, and you ask you ask the reasons why the client is wanting to do this project and it's it's an interesting it flips the dynamic again turning it turning it around um there was a deal on instagram the other day somebody was asking um how do i get clients to see my value and it and it drove me crazy because you don't you ask them why you're valuable and so and that's by having this why conversation you say well what why not use a pre-existing product you want to build a video chat at what's wrong with google me or zoom um why do you want to do this now? Why not wait six months? Maybe they'll say, oh yeah, we could wait six months, but usually there's a reason. Uh, and then why me? Why did you pick me for this role? Like, how, you know, why not? There's other developers that do this. Um, figure out, you know, who they're looking for. Uh, and then the next thing is uh, you have to find the business outcome that they're looking for. So if if you feel good about them, you feel like they're they're a good client to have, then you have to then you have to find the the outcome they're looking for. And the, the outcome they're looking for is not coding. Um, business outcomes have go one of two ways. It's either increasing, it's either creating money or decreasing expense. And every client that has ever hired you for work is wanting to do one of those two things. Sometimes there's like higher goals that are like, well, we're nonprofit and we want to like feed the poor, things like that. Um, and those clients do exist. And if you find them, you want to hold on to them. Um, but the majority, like over 90% of clients, they're wanting to do even, even the nonprofits are wanting to either, they're wanting to either increase money coming in or decrease money going out. Um, next step is pricing structure. This is, 
this is one of my favorites. Um, the, this is uh, how you price, how you structure the, when you're asking for the money. And th this is one of my favorite ideas. The first thing you start out with is you ask for 100% upfront. That, that, me, that is you ask for 100% of the money upfront from the start. And what this does is this is actually some tape, some people they'll go, you know, they'll, they'll ask to, they'll charge at the end of the project, or they will ask for 50% up front, 60% up front and 40% at the end, or they'll break it up like car payments. Um, but that's okay to do. But if you offer that at, at the beginning, then you're immediately, you're immediately giving away a negotiation point. So it, if, if mo the way this goes in most of our heads, you, you say, yeah, well, let's do hundred percent up front. And they say, no, now it's a negotiation. Okay, well, can you do 50% up front? What's amazing is that the first time I tried this, they said yes. They were like, okay. And I started and I got 100% of the money right out of the gate. And those people got a great website. Um, next step is from there, negotiate. Again, again negotiate down. Um, discounts, always a last resort. You don't discount the work you do. You you if they want a smaller price and then they get a smaller result. That's the way that works. They don't get the same result for a less lesser price. You're not Walmart, you don't discount things. You are a premium service provider. Um, avoid hourly as much as possible. And again, most of you have regular jobs, but when you take on the side projects, tr avoid doing hourly as much as possible. There's some that can be avoided for like government work or educational, um, but if when you can shift out of that, the deal of trading time for money, like use it 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 changes everything and there's all kinds of psychology you can use about why hourly billing is bad for the ser for a service providers like coders um you can look up all kinds of stuff like that next step is proposals so what this is is you the, there's all kind there's kind of all kinds of ways to structure proposals um my favorite and it's not the that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's the best. It's just the one that's worked for me the most. Um, you could there are other ways of doing them that are probably just as good or better, uh, but it it varies from person to person. So my my favorite is three prices. You have anchor price, target price, downgraded price. So the target price is what you expect to get for get paid for the project, and what that should be for side projects or freelance. How to determine that target number is pick a number that you want uh, to make for that year from, from your independent work. Um, and if that's $50,000, then divide that by 10 and that's $5,000, that's your target price. And what this does is it puts a premium, like you, you, you say, I only do 10 of these projects a year. And so I have, you know, that I have to, they have to pull in a decent chunk of change and 5,000 might sound like a lot for a, for a, for a software project. It's really not. There's project software projects that are hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so what you do when you structure your proposal, you have that target price, whatever that is, and then you have your anchor price. Your anchor price can be usually uh, by rule of thumb is three times whatever your target price is. And what that does is that puts into context everything else. They see they all they have to see that anchor price first. Because when they if you just give them one number, which I'm sure if you've if you guys have priced projects before, that's the way you priced it the very first time you did it um it's like you're you're basically giving them two choices yes or no yes to this number or no and there's nothing in between what this does is it gives them three choices and none of which are no and they still have the option to put, say no if it's just not a good fit but again it, it's you're you're shifting it to your value so anchor price should be three times to set context for the rest and downgraded price should be maybe half uh, or even a third of the anchor price and and what these so what these prices what do they get for these prices for the anchor price it's basically if money were no object this is what i could do for you usually you'll have in your mind you'll have like well, if they could if i could really push it another a level up i could really do this for them put that in the anchor price put that like that next level thing um for me like an example of that if i'm building a, a jam stack site um that could be an app like we'll we'll build a site and then app for it and if and the more the closer to what the client wants what their their business outcome is and and helping to move that number and it, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a money number it can be a number that helps shift that money number um 
but having a, that premium option. And the downgraded price is basically the target, the 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 tutorial. You're going to essentially write up a tutorial on how to do the the downgraded or the, the target price and provide it as a PDF so they can hire an Upwork or a Fiverr person. So and what that does is that puts a value on your thinking. If they pick, so that means if they pick the the downgraded price, you you'll get paid half, but half of that value of the target price is your thinking anyway. And that and that's that's a that's a whole other thing of, uh, that that is thinking through and understanding the value of your thinking through the code, not just the, your work. And so it's essentially, you get paid half of the original ask to deliver a PDF, and it and it'll be good and you'll you know provide some support for it but you won't do any work with your hands that's what that the price is that's what you're they're agreeing to um if your clients pick the top option consistently that means you're undercharging so this is another thing like what do i charge well you just you pick you figure out that target area and then and then you give them a proposal and if you keep getting clients picking the top option that means you're undercharging um it's if you're undercharging raise your target price to the first price should just shift everything over triple your target price and then and then tri you know triple that is not your new anchor price um and then if they you know they start backing away then you can back it off if they don't then triple it again um so this is a real life proposal that i did um, i want to give you guys hard like a hard example to to pull from this is actually an old proposal i did when i presented this to them they picked the top option and that was the second project in a row that they picked the top option. So that means that what does that mean? I have to I have to raise my prices. Um, and that 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 that's really how that works. So just so I, that way you guys know, I'm not just like making all this stuff up. This is a pro this is a proposal that was accepted, and they paid they picked for the top option. Me meaning industry leader, they're going to get the best of my best of my work. The site I was going to build for them was best in class. Like it was three years ahead of what their competitors were going to be at three years from now, you know, something like that, where it's like, no, cause nobody's going to build a jam stack site for this industry. Um, next is contracts. I have a, a little to say about contracts, but not much. Again, a little bit before I get into this, uh, none, I'm not a lawyer. None of this is official legal advice. Um, always talk to a lawyer, but if you have, if you have any serious questions about a contract, um, so my non-legal advice is contracts should only be a legal version of everything you've already talked about and nothing more. Um, everything you've already discussed in the proposal, everything like that, it's basically just legalese for all of that. Never, never sneak in anything into a contract that you haven't already discussed at some level. Um, you own the work, client has a irrevocable and unlimited license. So this is a licensing setup I like to do for my projects. If it's a bigger company, they may have a custom licensing that, that they want to do. But basically, this just means um, I own the work that I produce, which which means I can re I can reuse those coding patterns in other projects. And the client has unlimited. They can they can take my work and sell it, and that's the thing thing that happens. Somebody some, sometimes people sell companies and they sell the work. They can take my work and post it to Envato and sell it as a as a WordPress plugin or or whatever it is. Um, they can do that. They have the right. They, I I cannot take away their their rights of usage for that work, uh, but I retain the right to be able to reuse things that that aren't specifically related to their intellectual property. If they want to, again, if they want to have extended rights, then that's a that's a that's a bigger price. That might be my anchor price. Um, this these are some resources that uh, I I love using. I love uh bonsai for automated contracts proposals and invoices as you get bigger you might you may do custom versions of contracts by written by a real lawyer but bonsai provides good templates for, for when you're starting out um, company of one um, this is a book about uh talking th through like how building a business that serves you you as opposed to you serving your business all the time um you can i have i have a link for these at the end of the slide that you guys can check out and uh, and you can Check out the rest of those later. So, what to do next? Um, there's a in the Techlahoma Slack. There's a channel that we set up called Pricing Work, where you can discuss more about this. If you have or if you have questions, you can you can message on there. Um, if you want, so if you want to look at the resources for this talk, it's just https or it's just sam.lc letter l letter c sam.lc slash pricing, and it's a little Notion doc. 
of all the resources that I discussed in this um, and, and some more things.